welcome back to Sparring Pod with me, Halgeir Gustavsen. Today I'm, uh, I would say I'm a bit nervous uh, because the, the, today's guest is, uh, as you might understand from me speaking English, uh, English speaker. His name is Eric Linden and he's known for his work on The Punisher, second unit, Invincible Action Stars, The Conjuring. Uh, the Devil Made Me Do It and Avengers Endgame. So I'm uh, off to a quite rocky start here. Uh, he, uh, I, I actually saw him first time I saw him uh, was most likely one of the movies or TV shows he has been uh, working on, but I didn't know. And then I saw him in Corridor Crew with Stuntman Reacts. And he was really interesting guy so i reached out to him on twitter and he was kind enough to come visit me here in my virtual studio welcome so much uh mr linden eric nice nice of you to come oh thank you for having me appreciate it it's it's so cool to <clears throat> sorry it's so cool to have have someone uh that has been involved in an industry uh, that you've had so much joy out of. Uh, can you tell me a bit, uh, how did you start doing what you do? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> it's been, uh, uh, 16 years now. Um, I'm not sure how long you want the story to be, but, uh, you know, I'm from, a, a you know, relatively small town in Ohio. Um, nothing, super necessarily interesting about the state doesn't have like big city like chicago or you know new york anything like that but uh it's midwest town and with really good values and stuff like that um yeah. went to, went to school graduated um decided i wasn't happy uh doing the job i was i was doing i actually like went to school and and was successful at that job uh doing computer work um, and then one day just kind of decided to, uh, pursue other things, really take a dive and figure out what it was I wanted to do with my life. And I didn't really have an exact idea, but I also decided I should do something that was going to make me happy. And, um, you know, you kind of get, as far as I know, you get one life to live and, um, I wanted to, you know, make that awesome, uh, yeah. to the best of my ability. Uh, and I also realized it was a, it was fairly far fetched and, um, you know, it may not happen. So, uh, more or less, I wanted to be able to live my life and know that I, I, I tried and that I gave everything towards, um, you know, my dream. And if that, that dream failed, then at least I could, you know, be happy with knowing I tried. So uh, I started pursuing the stunt industry and, and acting and stuff like that in very small pieces, going to like an acting class or going and taking, going and taking, a, taking a boxing class like that until I got the confidence to, to move out to L.A. and um, then, then just started going after it as much as I could. Do you just start going to... Like as an actor, you just go to auditions. As far as I I have seen, uh, how how is it as a stuntman? Is it the same? You just go to auditions and say, "Here, I I want to do this," and then they say, "Okay, let's take you see you take a fall." Uh, <laughs> uh, no, not at all. It's actually uh, uh, completely different when it comes to the stunt world. Um, I'm glad. <laughs> it, oddly enough, it's uh, all about relationships. Um, and those relationships come from, you know, meeting people, uh, uh, training with people. Sometimes you're just, just helping them out. Like they may just need a hand yeah. where they're moving gear. Like, you know, you might be moving pads or helping them load up like um, shackles and shivs and you know things for like rigging ropes and whatnot, uh, essentially just like pulleys. So the, the guys that you meet through light networking, sometimes that means going to set or going to functions, or sometimes you just might meet them at the gym, and um, hopefully you're a cool a cool guy, and you show a willingness to to help out and want to learn. Um, it's more of a mentorship type of thing. 
uh, to build up the initial skills and relationships yeah. to, to getting that first job. Um, once, once you do get those first few jobs, you start meeting other people on set. Um, and then that tends to lead to, um, you, you getting recommended for something else, you know, like looks like a cop or that guy looks like a bad guy. Um, you know, cause that's usually, you know, you, you, you end up doing the jobs that are relatively stereotypical. We um, need someone who I, looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. You know, um, depending on what country, it, it, you, you know, you might be in at, at the time. Mm. Um, you know, I worked on some cop shows where, believe it or not, I was I was cast as a terrorist, which, <laughs> you know, is it stereotypically what you would what you would think of? But you know. Um, they decided that they were from like some other country and, and, yeah. and it, not necessarily they are from the stereotypical one. So um, anyway, you kind of start falling into those type of, of typecasting or whatever it might be. And then stunt coordinators begin to learn who you are and you start to build up a little bit footage um it, you know it's not very cut and dry you don't just walk into a room and audition um you, you're definitely building a reputation it's it sounds to me in in norway we have a saying uh, which is called trine factor which basically translates to face factor uh where if if you have a face the person in uh, charge likes then you're in luck uh, it's it sounds like it's uh, it's a bit like that also. Absolutely. Um, uh, now now if you do get this that first job and um, you know you're 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 an asshole to one of the people that might be just doing paperwork, um, somebody who is uh, serving food or you know moving a light, um, that's going to uh, you, that's not helping you get more jobs. Oh, it you know? gets noticed. Um, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's much less and there's long hours. So everybody has to be around each other for a long time. So they want to be around people that are pleasant to be around. Yeah. Uh, if, if you don't mind, I, I would like to show the viewers now, uh, just, uh, your show reel. Uh, if, if you can take us through what we're, uh, watching while it goes along. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is me in a Bentley commercial. Um, they had to hire a stuntman to drive a Bentley. Um, this is Westworld season two. That is Daredevil season two. I was doubling the Punisher. Yeah. This is three, 300 Rise of an Empire. It's the second one, not the good one. Um, <laughs> that's uh, me fighting Daredevil on the rooftop when he first meets up with the Punisher. Um, it was completely in shadow, so it's me fighting the entire time. Uh, that is in CIS Los Angeles, yeah. where I doubled Chris O'Donnell. And this, I remember, you you told this was one of the more painful things you've done. Uh, is that right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. In uh. CIS, in CIS. You get to do um, a lot of fun things. That, yeah, that right there. Uh, that's let's see. That's uh, Daredevil, Corridor Digital. Um, it's Grand Theft Auto. More Westworld. More Daredevil because more De Daredevil is always good. Uh, that's a previs. Uh, that's previs. See, that's a short for YouTube. Uh, another movie. That is video game high school. It looks so brutal. Yeah, let's see. That's Punisher season one. I think in, yeah. In, in, uh, Pun in Punisher, you did a uh, uh, stunt double for the Punisher, and some uh -huh. choreography. Stunt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I have a long um, kind of history with uh, making my way through the Marvel world. So, uh, you know, I started off as one thing and ended up as, as a stunt coordinator later on. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, let's get back to that after because I, I I want to know how that's different. But we'll we'll watch the last minute of this. Are you are you ever afraid? Um, no. You know, <laughs> you you. Uh, I think doing a lot of this stuff like um, you can't be afraid. Uh, because it, it could affect your timing and your performance and stuff like that because you have to be super focused. Yeah. Um, sometimes I, I, I might get a little worried ahead of time, um, but once they say action, I think it's just I kind of go into a, a super like like almost like a matrix mode where you're completely focused on the task at hand and um, any worry or, or, or you know fear is gone. You know, um, I think if you don't maybe get somewhat nervous to some extent, um, that doesn't make any sense. You're probably like a psychopath. Um, so anybody who says they don't is, is probably lying. But um, that does, you know, go out the window when a stunt, a stunt is about to start. Yeah. Um, you know, when they call when they call action, I'm not worried about like, oh, is the fire going to burn me or uh, you know, you know, is this, is this not, not just completely focused on like, I have to go from A to B, then I need to punch, then I need to block, then I need to get like this, and then I'm going to get pulled on the wire. Yeah. So it's focusing on, on timing and not messing that up because if you mess up any of those steps, then you could get hurt. And you don't want that. But yeah, I also, I think it's, it's quite important not to go around uh, your workplace being afraid. So that's good. Uh, but I, I, I can see that it's like, okay, this is uh, very, very hyperbolic. Uh, but it's, it's like uh, right before I go on stage to hold like a, a talk, keynote talk for a couple of hundred people. Uh, I can be... Um, not worried but i can be uh, sharpened just before but when i'm up there i have to just perform i'm not saying it's the same but uh, it, it's similar ish yeah ab absolutely and, and, and on stage uh you know some people might get up there and be like i'll be fine once i get started and then you freeze up yeah. i mean if that's the type of personality you have um you know, you're in the wrong business. Like you shouldn't be on yeah. stage. And there's other things that you can do. You know, um, that's not for you. But uh, uh, okay, let's uh, get to the stunt coordinator. Uh, how is that different from? Uh, don't you do any stunts yourself then, or is it just planning and coordinating the other stunt people? No. Um, when you are the stunt coordinator, you are not doing any of the stunts, um, or, sh or shouldn't be, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, you are there to keep eyes on, you know, the camera that could be moving, um, making sure everybody's kind of in the right place. Like you're in charge of safety, like you're, you're one of the factors that is kind of watching the entire crew. Um, because you don't want your man to get hurt or you don't want somebody who's running camera or, you know, walking through with like a, a, a plate of Twinkies to get knocked out, um, by not paying attention. So you, there's an overseer of all those things and that's the stunt coordinator. Um, plus you're watching camera to see, uh, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times something will happen. And the director will be like, hey, that was great. We're, we're moving on. And you're like, that that wasn't great. Actually, like he completely missed that. Like uh, it was supposed to hit him in the face. And, you know, there was this much of a gap. Yeah. And he's like, are, are, you, are you kidding me? Really? And yeah. we'll, we'll play it back. You know, and they go and they'll play it back. And they see it. You're right. Because, you know, the stuntman's kind of used to um, seeing things fast. And, um other people aren't necessarily uh so you, you sometimes you're involved with camera and making sure that the shot works it sounds like uh the stunt coordinator is like a hse uh health and safety with like a focus on the stunts uh and helping the director yeah yeah i mean you're um it's all a team you know yeah. so 
the, the like you know the assistant director is making sure that they stay on schedule and that they kind of wrangle the group and make sure everybody's staying on task and that the shots are getting done and they're keeping track of what's been done and what lenses and what angles and stuff like that. Um, you know, stunt coordinator is very similar. Um, you know, a director could um, certainly do a job maybe without the stunt coordinator, but then ultimately they would be doing part of that role um, and would lose their focus on what they were doing. Um, so I think everybody's in charge of safety, of course, but, yeah. uh, when it comes to the stunt, um, the, the stunt coordinator kind of becomes the boss of the set. Do you, uh, often find yourself just sitting, watching a movie or a TV show and uh, thinking, oh my God, they should have had like someone looking at this before they wrapped it up. L- like literally every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh I've I've been trying to stop doing that because I find uh, a lot of the time uh most of my movie going experiences or TV watching experiences gets um destroyed from uh like me and my 9-year-old daughter watched uh Hunger Games uh last night. And I, I, yep. I'm guessing you've seen it. And unfortunately, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they have like this. Uh, th- they build up and build up and build up, and the big bad guy in the end are some dogs. Yeah, I, I, you know, they. I think that there is a need. Um, who knows if this need will be filled? But for an action like consultant. Um, so, so somebody that would come in um, before the stunt coordinator even starts um, and they would go over the script and when they're trying to decide if they can afford to do this or what where they should spend their money yep. um, they should come in and talk to the director about like well you know this is how this would be executed you know maybe this isn't that smart um, maybe there's something more interesting that you could do do and, and and them because they're the expert in just the action part of it, uh, you know, but also would need to understand how that affects the story yep. and what that does to the character. Like you can't just be the guy that's like, you know, more action, like full throttle. So um, I think there's a need for that. They already spend so much money on so many different things. Yep. And uh, especially with this, with, uh, you know, COVID-19, who knows, they're going to spend more money on trying to keep this the set safe now, um, but there's a need for that. Will they ever do it? Uh, who knows? <laughs> no, I, I've been also. I've been. Um, uh, I've been thinking that they should have this um, logical plot uh, person that will just read through the script and see all the apparent like total plot holes. Uh, th- yeah, I, I mean, if somebody would have just given given me the script for the, the, the last Star Wars movie, I could have saved it. I would have made him another billion dollars. <laughs> or the last season of Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Like, it just, it seems like that they're, they're trying to shock people so much that they go into the, the, the part where you just lose everybody. Yeah. And that's not the, the point either. No. Uh, w- would you say that you like being uh, the the guy who does the stone stunts the, the best or the the coordinator? Oh, you know what? I was going to kind of get back to that. Sometimes I get rambling. Um, <laughs> the, so when it comes to being a stunt coordinator, those you, you shouldn't be doing the stunts. Now, the flip side of that is it's difficult uh, not impossible, but difficult to listen to a stunt coordinator as a, as a stunt man, uh, and and take what he he says, says as as he or that I should do what he's saying yep. if he hasn't already done it himself. Yeah. Um, now, when you maybe not that very specific thing, but if you're working for a stunt coordinator who was like a legendary stunt man, and they ask you to jump through that window. 
and they said that they do these pads and this pads and you know the timing is going to be right and this is what you need to do uh i'm very comfortable with trusting what they say yep. because i know if i don't do it and pull it off that this guy is so good that he'll put on my clothes and go jump through that window yep. so uh and you know that's kind of how i do things like when i'm telling somebody something or how I want something done in a fight, uh, they know I can do it. Um, it, it so, you know, you want a leader who, who has been in the trenches yeah. and, um, uh, yeah. So I, I, of course I love being, being a stunt man and I still, I still do it and want to do it. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm no fool. Like, uh, uh, those days are, are winding down. Um, I'm still healthy and everything's in operational condition. So I, I want to move on to directing and, and stunt coordinating so that, uh, you know, these younger guys can go and learn and fall down and stuff like that. And I'll still be able to walk when I'm 60. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I'm thinking that, uh, as a, a stuntman, you might have like, I, I, I wouldn't say expiry date, but, uh, best before that uh i don't see that many stunt people in their late 60s for instance um well the reason you don't see them is because they are in the cars yeah okay yeah that there's sense. like the background traffic or uh i tell you what man you've seen um uh the dark night yeah 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 the batman that has uh, uh, the Joker in it. Yeah. The guy that, that you know, um, he's coming at Batman with a semi, and that semi goes, and like goes flips completely upside down. Yeah. That guy was 70 years old in that thing. <laughs> he's, I, well, I, yeah, I know. Like, I literally, he, he taught me how to drift, like, you know, like a <laughs> yeah, car. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's a video of me and him in the car. I'm just like holding up my like like iPhone three or whatever, and um, he's just ripping it, and it looks like it's my grandpa. And <laughs> and and I mean, there's freaking tires flying off the you know like um, a rubber flying off from the tires, yeah. and we are just doing these three sixties and figure eights. And, um, you know, winds like blowing in, and you know it's all crazy. And this guy looks like crazy old grandpa just sitting here drifting like a mustang that, that sounds um, awesome so you know that's awesome. yeah yeah that, you know i don't be don't underestimate it there there's some older gentlemen who are old school cowboys that they're they're in that movie they just their their faces may not be uh what what kind of things do you like the best about your your uh, i wouldn't say job uh, your work your entirety of work um, you know, uh, I just, I think, I mean, sure. You know, there's like the glamorous part of like, oh, you're making a movie or whatever. But believe me when like you're making it, there's zero things that are glamorous about it. You're usually like have to get up at four o'clock in the morning and drive to set. And then you're on set for 12 hours, you know, 14 hours sweating or freezing or in the rain. And, um, you sit around for eight hours waiting for something to happen, to happen then it and they need you and now you're tired and then it's time to go. Like, I, I, it's not like that. It's really not that great. Like it takes a certain mindset to be able to yeah. do it. Um, it, it's actually fairly difficult just to get to the stunt part. Um, but then, you know, that being said, um, some of the things that are great about it is that I was never good at doing a nine to five thing. Maybe yeah. it's like really like ADD or something like that. But when things get like too monotonous, I would keep walking into the same office. I keep like taking the same way to work. Like I started to like, kind of like go crazy. Like I was like waking up like groundhog, like Bill Murray, you know, yeah. groundhog day. Um, so that's what made me kind of decide to change. So what I love about this industry and this job is that I'm constantly going to like a different place. Like I've, I've, I've been all over the world. Like I've been to China and Bulgaria, London, um, Taiwan, like I just Hawaii to work like all over the place. And you know, you're, you're constantly kind of starting at different times. Sometimes you have days off. Sometimes you have a lot of work. 
Um, and then also you're working with new people. Mm-hmm. So like maybe not every day, but like, then the next week there'll be a new group of people or there'll be new guys or you'll be on a different show and you're with a new crew. Um, you're in a different environment. You're inside, you're outside, you're downtown. I'm in a park I haven't been to, uh, I'm up on a mountain, you know, whatever it might be, um, access like, you know, the, the, the roof type rooftop, uh, fight on daredevil, you know, that was a roof that you are absolutely not allowed to go to in New York. And, um, you know, it'd be a tourist location because you can see, um, the empire state building and certain buildings from that view, but, um, no one's allowed up there. It's also not safe to be up there cause there aren't railings and stuff like that. Wow. So, you know, we had access to that, um, which normally I never would have gotten to do. So I, I think that those are the things that I like the most about the industry is, kind of something new all the time. And then also uh, there's there's really great, great people that, that work in this business. Yeah, you, you kind of also answered my next question was, uh, that was uh, what kind of things you don't like about your job? Uh, or that is, uh, or maybe that's more what you don't like with the, the old job you had before you started doing this. But, oh, I can tell you right now, I don't, what I don't like about this job is yeah. sitting around waiting for hours and hours and hours they have zero concept of how long it takes to do anything and they will bring you in i kid not eight ten hours early and you will literally sit there wasting your life away away doing nothing like absolutely nothing there's nothing to do they don't want you on set like you just have to like sit there and like you know, just pretty much eat crackers or drink, you know, drink coffee mm. until it's time for you to come in there. And, um, and everybody uh, expects you to be like really sharp when you're called upon. So you can't really doze off or just can, can you like watch Netflix or play games or. Uh, it's pretty typical to just sit there and play around on your phone. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't think that, also, they usually don't provide you with chairs or anything <laughs> or, or you're lit. Sometimes I've just sat on the sidewalk, like just, just waiting or sit on my stunt bag or something like that. Like just um, 10 hours. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, you know, now if it's like, say there's like two or three of us there, well, you'll, you'll hang out with the stunt coordinator or you'll be close by or what, you know, you know something like, something like that kind of hang out and talk. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there's 30 people there, you know, the stunt coordinator doesn't want 30 people following him around. So you all usually just have to be in one area. Um, and you know, it's almost like you're in a invisible cage just waiting for, for the dog to be needed, you know? Um, so there's those type of things that are, they're somewhat annoying. Um, also there's days where you're there for 10 hours, not doing stunts, but you're needed for the scene. So then, yeah. then you actually are working like, you know, you need to like walk through the door. You need to get out of the car. You need to like, you know, interact with this actor. And then, you know, five scenes later, you're going to get shot. So the, that that all makes sense. But yeah. um, they got a real timing problem when it comes to filming stuff. Yeah, because a lot of people, most people, no, let me say, all people have a uh, uh, way too uh, too much optimistic uh, time frame on how much time everything takes. Uh, that's my uh, that's my take at least. Uh, most people I meet they they think things will take a lot shorter time than it's really gonna gonna take, and they o- over exaggerate the, the the shortness of wait on almost all projects. Absolutely. Absolutely. And nobody wants to, uh, you know, be waiting on you to be ready uh, because the machine has to keep grinding ahead and and making the movie happen. However, you know, I think that you should get there early. You should get there a couple hours early just to just in case they're they they say just in case you're running early. However, they like I've never movie ever run early ever in 15 years. Um, I can guarantee you one thing. If you yeah. ever show up like just on time, they will have run early. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, the uh, 
that's the thing is even though they call you in six, seven, eight hours early, uh, the, the, there's like a little saying that uh, I, I learned long ago, and that's um, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. Yeah. So yeah. not only are you coming in eight hours early, I get to set – I usually shoot for about an hour to 45 minutes early, and then I'll sit in the parking lot just so that like there's – I've missed all the traffic. There's yeah. zero chance that I can be late, and then I always walk in you know, 15 to 20 minutes early just Smart. to like kind of put my bag down so when – they say go. Sometimes they want you to go straight into hair and makeup. So, uh, yeah, that's just it's part of the deal. It's, it's when I say all day, I mean it is from crack of dawn until you know the sun is down. It is all day. What kind of things uh, inspires you? Um, you really good filmmaking, man. Um, things that is what inspires me. Um is the final product. I've always been in love with film and, uh, stories, um, and really, you know, really great action obviously excites me, but okay. also there's a lot of things where it's just completely story driven, um, that, that really inspires me. Um, you know, some of the stuff out there like tenant looks fantastic from, uh, Christopher Nolan, um, you know, really into the stuff that he does. Uh, I just really rewatched The Fountain. Um, uh, Darren Aronofsky. Uh, he, it, it's a pretty out there film um, with Hugh Jackman, but I wanted to revisit visit that, and because I was really studying like shots and um, editing and stuff like that. And my goodness, it is it is fantastic. Um, so so you know, there's certain you know, director specifically, because I'm trying to get more into directing and stuff like that, that I've been studying. Uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of Michael Mann. Um, like Heat and Collateral are uh, some of my favorite films. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, I googled the, the Fountain and uh, I haven't seen it, but uh, but I see, oh, watch. see it. You need, to, yeah. you need to be like, you know, you, you probably a um, couple drinks deep or, or a few smokes in or whatever to really get the full experience. But, uh, I can do that. It, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, um, I mean the dude literally like goes to, uh, I mean, it spans like, I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what you thought. Like I kind of went and looked it up afterwards, had something in my mind. And then like one of the newer theories is what I thought on my own. Um, yeah, he goes through space and time and everything else. It's pretty cool. But I think it was just so far out there at the time. The reviews ended up not being very good. Um, yeah, I'd yeah seen... so it, it it didn't actually it didn't uh, didn't do that well at the box office. Yeah, it did terrible. And yeah. um, I I'd seen it. I think uh, uh, probably when it came out on DVD or whatever at the time. Yeah. But I remember going like, yeah. And then I watched, I rewatched it, and I was like, "Wow, it's pretty good." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I, I like rewatching, uh, or sometimes I like rewatching stuff when when I rewatch movies that I've I've held dear to my heart, like from childhood, and then I rewatch it, and it's like it hasn't kept up at all. I get really sad. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you, if you ever experienced the same, but it's uh, it can be quite hard. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's many many films. I'm like, oh, that film's amazing. I loved it, and then you go back and see it, and you're like, oof. Uh. Uh, um, but you know, that's part of the magic of it. Uh, when you don't know how to dissect a film, or whether you actually are luckier than than I am, because you can just sit back and truly enjoy it. Um, I see every single bit of CG, like I can't help it. Like I, whether I look for it or not, I'm just like, yeah. Oh God, why didn't they just do that for real? It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, you know, I can see when, Oh yeah, like that ties different, you know, they must not have got the continuity right on um, shot to yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, continuity errors and, uh, logical, uh, logical mistakes that really just grinds my gears. 
what what would you say is the most yeah. important thing that you've learned uh in uh, the, yeah the last 16 years patience <laughs> so if <laughs> if you could travel back in time uh, 16 years and uh, meet uh, eric 16 years ago what what would you tell him you have one minute yeah yeah i would just let him know that it's um there's nothing first first thing i would say is that being the smartest guy in the room uh is always good however nobody cares so just <laughs> yeah. yeah um i would also tell myself that uh there's no such thing as grinding too hard so you should try harder because you'll get farther faster um you know that that the people the people that any people that get ahead for no reason at all. Um, but that's kind of luck comes into it. Uh, hard work makes you seem do, lucky. Do so. you believe in luck? Because I don't. Um, you know, the, I don't know. I think, I think I do believe that, that there's some luck. I, I think that I like to believe that there's some sort of mysticness to the world. Um, and another thing I've, I've heard in my, my, you know, little stunt isms is that, uh, somebody said that they'd rather be lucky than good when it comes to stunts. Um, so I feel like I've had, uh, you know, I've got a bit of both and I'm, um, I'm, I've been happy with that. I, I feel you can have, um, lucky circumstances, uh, I, for instance, I'm I'm born in Norway. I'm a white male. Uh, there could most likely be no better place for me to be born or way to be born. Uh, that's lucky. But I remember when I uh, I used to work uh, in like uh, a call center, and the my coworkers were always like, "Oh, Halger, you're so lucky." And I'm like, "Okay, uh, let's see your numbers." Yeah, well. I called 10, uh, 10 times the people you did call. I called uh, over 100 people today and you called like 18 uh, or 10 for that matter. Uh, yes, uh, I might be lucky that I reached the people that wanted to buy my shit. But uh, if, if you had called as many people, maybe you also would have. Yeah, absolutely. That's just what I was saying. You know, um, I think that you can be lucky, but also uh, hard work makes you appear more lucky yeah. to yeah, everybody I, I totally agree. else. Yeah, I, I totally agree. What, what would you say is the best idea you ever had? <laughs> um, goodness gracious. Uh, Are you an idea guy? You know, like the best idea I ever had, I, you know, I do remember when I um, first decided to do stunts, there was just like this one very pivotal moment um, where I had to make a decision because I had to basically quit my job uh, and pursue this thing that I'd been flirting with. Yeah. Uh, um, but it was like I needed to walk in and tell my job, like, hey, I was going to leave for a couple of months. And then I wanted to have a job when I got back, but I knew there was a chance that I would have, you know. And regardless of what they said, I was going to leave. Um, so it was changing my entire life. Um, that, so I think that's probably like, I don't know, I guess the smartest thing or the best idea I ever had is I decided to, I obviously decided to do it. Yeah. Um, and if I wouldn't have done that a lot, you know, I wouldn't have met my girlfriend, you know, and, and I, you know, now I have a baby boy and it's the greatest thing in the world. Um, so How none old? of that, would, uh, he's seven months, man. I just had my, my, my first father's day yesterday. So right. that was pretty cool. Yeah, man. Um, so of course my, my girlfriend would want me to say like, it was that like when I kissed her, right. Or something like <laughs> yeah. that. You know, none of this would have ever happened. I wouldn't be talking to you if I like literally like I, on my lunch break, I found out that I was, you know, before my lunch break, I found out that it, I'd been accepted 
to go do something and work on a movie as literally an extra, like oh. bottom of the barrel, like nothing. But I was able to work on it for, uh, I think it was like six weeks or seven weeks or something like that. And I was going to have to leave town. So uh, I had to go to Philadelphia. So I went on my lunch break and uh, didn't eat lunch. I went to this this lake that is was near my job in my house at the time and walk up this massive amount of stairs where people go and work out, run up and down the stairs and you get to the top and there's like a dam, right? And I just sat on this rock and was like staring at the water and just like trying to decide, like, am I going to change my life right now? Like it could be a huge mistake. And, um, you know, like literally started crying and eventually like pulled myself together and was like, yeah, fuck it. You know, let's let's go. Like, if you don't make changes, nothing's ever good. Who would who would play you in the Eric Linden movie? <laughs> um, no one's making a movie of this, dude. <laughs> no, but but just just think about it. The uh, yeah, well, I'm not saying it right now, but. Uh, uh but the the scene you described here uh it's it's quite like taken out of a of a movie don't you think um yeah i guess so i mean it, you know it doesn't it doesn't when i think back to it it does seem that way but uh uh didn't feel like it at the time like i i would go up uh to that 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 spot wasn't abnormal for me to go to because i would go and run and uh do workouts there um because there's you know, it's like a mile and a half down, a mile and a half back. So you were, I, I knew I was running three miles. Um, and then, you know, running the stairs or whatever that would be. Um, so, man, who would play me in a movie? Um, How about some, John Burnham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have, I'd have, you know, his legs are too skinny. <laughs> <laughs> but except that uh, I think I think that would be good or could you yeah, do it yourself yeah. um yeah I mean uh, we probably get have to get a younger man to go do it at this point <laughs> yeah, most likely uh, w- would uh, uh, have you had like a really bad idea uh, during your uh, years oh there's way too many we'd be here for hours <laughs> <laughs> not like at the top one no um no you know um i think i think mistakes are part of being good yeah. you know like there's been a there's been a lot of bad ideas um you know I've, I've i've tried different camera tests uh i've said things that are dumb um i've made, I've made mistakes on sunset you know there are things that like even like you're you should have looked for, you should have anticipated, but that all becomes experience. Um, like there's this one time, uh, for example, it's like, how can you say it's the worst thing that's that you've ever thought of or the biggest mistake you've ever made? Because, um, I don't think that I've had anything. I'm still here. So there's nothing that's been catastrophic. Um, but there, there's this scene in daredevil, uh, season two, I was, I was doubling and coordinating. Although I wouldn't do that at the same time, I was either doing one or the other. Yep. Um, so I was coordinating, and this this car needed to come down and crash into another car. Okay, and um, it wasn't supposed to be fast. wasn't a big deal. The guy had been shot, and he like kind of barely makes it there. Right. So um, we knew the one car was going to move, so we put another another car behind that car. Car. So the, this car would bump into this car, and then this car would bump into the car behind it. Yep. Um, put things underneath the wheels so that they wouldn't move, um, and uh, you know all that stuff to make sure. I, I, I even think one of them was chained to the ground. Right? Uh, we did a lot to make sure that it wouldn't go too far. Yep. Um, my mistake was as uh, uh, the guy who wrangles the cars. I was like, "Hey, did you put the catch car?" Which was the car behind the car? Yeah. Uh, did you put put the e-brake on the catch on the catch car? He's like, "Yep, we're good to go." Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't go check. You know, I just but I did remember to ask, right? I did my job, um, made sure the you know, look at the wheels, everything looks good. Um, well, he didn't do it, and um, the car jumps into the other car, and then that car goes down the block and runs over a tree. 
<laughs> so, uh, um, it, it, and it was a small tree, but uh, the tree didn't make it. No. So, you, you know, I now learned that uh, when you ask somebody something or whatever, you can't assume that they did it. No. Um, you need to take, no. take the time to, to go make sure it was done. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it is important to you, you have to check. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you you expect everybody else to be as good as you are, for example. You should. They're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah a, a lot of people uh, I talk to, like entrepreneurs and stuff, they they say, um, "Oh well, my employees they don't they don't work as hard as I do. They don't they don't sacrifice as much as I do." And uh, like uh, Gary Wayne the uh, he got the same question, and he's like. Well, if you give them half your company, then then maybe. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, would you say that you uh, you tend towards systems and order in your life, or chaos and like uh, no systems? Yeah, I'm not. I I feel like I'm a little bit more on the uh, the creative side. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that was that left brain. I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, one of the brains. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to like analytical and and numbers and stuff like that, uh, terrible. Like I, I, you know, I can't. Um, I'm more. I'm better at coming up with ideas and and you know, I was always into art and stuff like that. So um, there's not a ton of a ton of order. I would say I, that's why I couldn't stick with a nine to five yeah. job. I like like things being malleable, like and, and changing and. You know, not not too monotonous. Mm. Uh, three things you can't do without. Well, I mean, nowadays, I mean, this has probably changed every single year. But I, things I can't do do without without are the things that I like like literally have been having for months, which has been great. And that's uh, my girlfriend, my son, and lifting weights. <laughs> are you an Android or an iPhone guy? iPhone, come on. Uh, what's your favorite apps? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Uh, I I don't I don't Facebook at all. Um, uh, I have Twitter pretty much just for informational reasons, like just to see what what's going on. I don't really have a lot to say. Um, I, I I feel like if you talk too much, um, it's probably not a good thing. And, uh, I, you know, I like Instagram. I think that that's pretty cool because that's kind of how my space and Facebook and stuff like that yeah. used to be was that you were sort of seeing things that other, other people were, and then, uh, they would see what you were doing. And that was mostly through pictures. Yeah. Um, now everything's become a, a joke or a game or, a you know, political or a meme or whatever. Um, I, so I'm not into that too much. Uh, but there's this damn game that I play all the time uh, uh, whenever I do have time, especially on, on set when I'm bored, and it's a uh, Marvel Strike Force where you are uh, – yeah, yeah. I like – I literally am like playing the Punisher or you know, whatever. <laughs> so like some, some little turn-based game where you just like kind of click on it. It's like it's absurd. It's stupid, but uh, – it's, it's what I do in simple Facebooking. For me, it's it's like a brain. Uh, I I wouldn't say workout, but like a brain treadmill, just to have something to do. Yeah, absolutely. It's a uh, uh, also it's like you can only do so much per day day, and the, yeah. um, so it's it's a uh, uh, you're playing the long game yeah. to like build your squad, yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, New Year's Eve last year. My my father passed away, and uh, to kind of make sure my if I if I let my brain just run along with everything, it will go really um, dark. Or I I will think really uh, at least then I would really just wallow in uh, pain and sorrow and stuff. But I found this game that was just enough challenging that i could just if i just focused on that and listened to a podcast in addition i couldn't think of anything else i i was just using up my bandwidth and yeah i yeah, found that to be I quite can, nice <laughs> yeah what game what game was it i can see how you would need time um 
you know, maybe time to heal. heal. So, 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 so uh, it's, it's a, you know, like my, my, my dog passed away. Yeah. It was this, you know, a couple of years ago and like, I couldn't even look at a picture of him for, for like a year, you know? Yeah. I, it's a card game uh, called Gwent based on the Witcher uh, show and books. Yep. And you kind of, you build decks and you have different kinds of, uh, like you can play with monsters or uh, Nilfheim. You can play from uh, like a general on one of the different kind of, uh, um, factions and then you have like 10 cards and you draw cards and they're rounds and it's really strategic I, i've been i've been a nerd like my whole life uh so yeah. i've been playing like magic the gathering lord of the rings trading card game uh, i did a Ma- vampire the masquerade trading card game so it's yeah. it's nice to have like on the ipad just something to do that's takes my focus and uh, kind of, I wouldn't say it sharpens my wit or anything, but it's it's something for my brain to do while uh, keeping it occupied. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the same thing with this game. Is it's a uh, turn turn based, yeah. but if you make the wrong decision, you're gonna it'll cascade and you're gonna yeah. lose. Um, uh, you know that, that that's so funny. I'm I I've been a big nerd as far as like comic books and you know i used to read vampire books and yeah. you know people it's like kind of wouldn't assume it and i'm like oh yeah i was like i'm sweet like I, i'm i'm sweet at video games dude yeah <laughs> cool uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it makes no sense. i don't get to do it much anymore but like i yeah bit, big nerd when it comes to that stuff just um now we get like uh comment from Eppergutten at uh, Twitch, Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so you uh, prefer Instagram or Snapchat? Are you on Snapchat? Uh, no, you know, I feel like I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm getting old, but I feel like Snap, not Snapchat's for kids. Yeah. So uh, yeah. just You should, just you should come to Norway. Uh, Norway is uh, I, I spoke to the Snapchat people of uh, yeah the, the, the and Norway is uh, it you are correct in like most countries but in Norway it's like everyone uh, Snapchat has overtaken uh, Instagram in Norway it's the uh, uh, number two social media right below Facebook in Norway now interesting I is have it no idea why where we send each other messages and talk and just like kind of everything huh yeah 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 message service just sending out random shit yeah i worked in china for quite some time and we got on the social media there uh it was wechat yeah, and WeChat. uh you know we were only there. yeah we were only there a couple of days and they were like you have to be on wechat it's what yeah. everybody does and this was this was i don't know 7 years ago yeah and with WeChat, you can pay for stuff and you can order. So you can basically do everything. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I yeah. actually, I have a WeChat account because uh, there's this Norwegian uh, soccer podcast that I listened to. And they were asked, okay, we need to find um, uh, find a Chinese team to, uh, to cheer for. Uh, what would you suggest? And they were like, oh, there's a cool team called Naimongul in the second division. And somebody uh, like wrote them and said, "Yeah, I, I want to make like a Norwegian supporter club for the uh, Naimongul people." And I was like, "Okay, I can build a website and I can." So we're basically an organization. And then some Chinese people contacted us because they'd seen us on Instagram. <laughs> so I was I was like invited into their WeChat with like uh, five hundred or thousand like hardcore uh, Naimongul fans. And they were like, you're in Norway and you like our team. That's so amazing. So one of the guys, he was actually traveling to China to, to visit them and everything. It was quite crazy. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm really not surprised that uh, Snapchat is like that just because, you know, I've been to so many other countries and um, just see how they just use things differently or there's different companies that are popular or whatever. Um, and I embrace that. That's, that's amazing. I mean, what, there's not one thing that's, that's right. How about YouTube or TikTok? Uh, you know, I don't do the, the, you know, the TikTok. I also, it seems like it's a kid's thing to me right now. Um, uh, 
but you know, obviously YouTube's essential. Um, and you know, I try, if something comes up social media wise, I try to jump on it and just at least so I can stay kind of current. Yeah. Um, but you know, if it doesn't interest me personally. I won't be on it just because it's popular. No, I, I understand that. Well, uh, in the end of uh, all my interviews, I have like 10 really quick questions and sometimes I get 10 quick answers. Uh, so I'm going to uh, try, try that right now. Okay. What's your favorite word? Fuck. What word do you hate? Damn, I don't know. Word that I hate. Um, just, man, I don't know. I don't. Th- I don't like to hate too much. Let's put it that way. Uh, what things t- uh, turns you on? Not sexually, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, uh, sunshine and and um, you know. You know, fitness. What kind of things grinds your gears? Stupid people. <laughs> uh, luckily, there's not that many of them. <clears throat> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite sound? Sound? Yeah. Um. You know, I mean, I, I I would say ocean just, but that, I bet everybody says that, you know. Um, you know, I, I, there's no, nothing like having a guitar just kind of like acoustic. Um, like sweet strumming? Yeah, exactly. Like I, I like music that's relaxing more than anything or that's uh, melodic, you know, something like, like Tool, for example, yeah. or, you know, that is... It can be uh, it can be rough, but it also is um, entrancing. Do you like their new album? Uh, of uh, you know, I do. I think that there's some good songs on it, but yeah. a lot of times, if I'm in kind of tool mode, I'll start listening to it because I like want to like it more than I do. <laughs> I think it's a great, I think it's a great addition, and then I find myself uh, clicking down to lateralis. Or you know, one you know, ten thousand days and being like, I'll just get back to what's up, you know, amazing. Is there a sound you hate? Yes, um, I don't like the sound of metal scraping together. It hurts my teeth. Mm. What's your favorite curse word? It's fuck. Mm. Yeah. If you should have like a profession except the one you're having right now, what would that be? Hmm. Uh, like completely different. I don't know. I think uh, I would like I would like to do something outdoors. You know, maybe like uh, um, mountaineering or you know something that had to do with guns. <laughs> what kind of profession would you not like at all? Uh, I mean, I had it. I don't like a desk job. I it, it's just it's it, it's too. It's too monotonous. Yeah. If heaven exists, what would you rather have God tell you when you get there? Oh wait, say it again. If if heaven exists and you get there and God's like what does he say? Did you have fun? <laughs> cool. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh for all the people watching, check out uh, Eric uh, uh, on his Instagram, I guess. Uh, any anywhere else yeah. they should check you out uh yeah instagram and and uh, uh I, I i pretty much instagram only i've got a few things on youtube um yeah. i'm actually gonna re- release a short that i directed uh here at the beginning of july so uh yeah. that look that on instagram cool uh f- if you can just st- stay around for a couple of minutes uh, to all the other people thank you so much for watching this will be uh, the last show before summer, uh, but I'll be uh, coming back right after. Uh, have a nice day and speak to you suddenly.